Well guys, the camshaft killing coyote is back. A couple months ago, I posted a video of this exact truck. It had a bad tick in the valve train and we found a failed rocker. Uh, the bearing, the actual roller bearing came apart in it. Truck is back for a similar complaint. This time, I don't know if it's gonna go so easy, but we gotta tear it apart and take a look. Let's get a listen on this, John. 168,000 miles. So I knew when we just replaced the old rocker, there was always a risk that the cam would not survive. And I'm hoping that another rocker and lifter has failed, but it may be the entire exhaust cam. It sounds like it's coming from a similar part of the engine. So let's tear into this thing and see what we find. What I'm also a little concerned about is this tap has changed sound since I last heard this truck. I heard this thing tapping about a month ago and I told the guy we're probably gonna have to do another rocker or dig deeper and now it sounds a little quieter which means something has diminished it certainly hasn't gotten better so i'm not going to bore you with pulling this apart if you guys go to my other video which i'll link down below shows you how to do all of that uh, i'm going to tear right in here and see what we have and then i'll bring you guys back well guys we found our problem so if you take a look at that final cam lobe there the one that's right up against the reluctor wheel that is the furthest back intake lobe you can see the surface finish on that is not good, so it's pretty obvious that that is our damaged rocker. Now you may see that and go, holy crap, that is serious, we need a new camshaft. Well, maybe, but also maybe not, and I'll explain a little bit more about that now. All right, got them out. Lifter looks fine like usual. Rocker, bearings are stacked up on each other. And then the cam lobe gets into this, tears up the sides of the cam lobe, wears on the surface where the roller's supposed to ride. The coincidence here is this is the furthest valve back on the intake cam. And 12 or 15,000 miles ago, this truck did the same thing on the exhaust side. So, does Ford make crappy rockers? Well, I would say yes. Typically yes with these engines, but there might be more to the story here, like this head has an oiling problem or something's up because stacking two right next to each other does seem pretty coincidental. That's the condition of that lobe. You can compare those two surface finishes. It actually does not look as bad as I thought it did when I first got eyes on it. This actually looks similar to how that other exhaust cam looked. And now that that's got some miles on it, we'll, we'll spin this engine around. I want to take a look and see how that one is. The theory could be that if you get a rough cam surface, maybe the roller eventually um, burnishes that back into position, but I think that's a big ask. Here's the part I'm kind of excited about. You see that cam lobe right there? That thing looks pretty good. And that was gnawed up, just like the one we were just working on last time when it failed. Maybe not quite as bad, but bad enough where I was very concerned about it, and a lot of people watching were very concerned. Checking my work here, see if the rocker is seated on the lifter. Come around the other side, make sure it's seated on the valve spring correctly. Yeah, it looks just like the one next to it. I'm working way under the dash here, so you really can't see. I'm just gonna give each one of these a visual inspection. Look for anything that looks out of line while we're in here. I do have a spare rocker in stock. Oh, here's another one. We caught this one early. Look at that, there ain't, ain't no burns in it. Uh, talk to your local Ford dealership or Ford engineer about that. These are trash, I mean, I don't know. Maybe this truck got a bad batch. I don't know how common this is, but that's three in 160,000 miles. I only got one spare left, so if I find any bad ones, we're gonna have to send it down the road until I get more parts. But yeah, we caught this one nice and early, so it was still rolling. We didn't tear up the cam at all, which is cool. Just kidding, the cam did get into the side of that thing a little bit, but nothing we're concerned about. That's nothing compared to damages we've seen, but just extremely disappointing. You got 32 of these things bouncing around in there and they're all just doing a bad job at it. The thing about just replacing failed rockers as they fail is if they run too long, they tear up the cam pretty good or they at least leave scoring and marks on it. We don't know how thick that hard layer on the outside of the, if it's an induction hardened cam or if whatever, 
we don't know how thick that layer is and we don't know how close you are to fixing it and then having it wipe the cam out at a later date. Some people mentioned in the last video that this is a total hack job repair and it's gonna fail tomorrow or 10,000 miles down the road. Yes, that is possible and that risk does exist. I agree that the proper move here is to replace the camshaft and replace all of the rockers and lifters on that cam. So let's go through that in our head real quick, right? Camshaft is 400 bucks from Ford, plus or minus a couple bucks. Each rocker and lifter combo is 33 bucks and you got eight of them on each side of the end or on each cam. You're looking at 664 bucks per cam. Now the labor to do that becomes quite substantial because the whole front timing cover's gotta come apart. Are you really gonna do all of that, only replace one cam? No, you have to replace all four because now you got these old rockers everywhere else in the engine or are you just gonna put new rockers on old cams on those other three? Either way, you've got 32 valves, four camshafts, so now you're up to like $2,800 just in parts, probably throw eight to 10 hours of labor on that, you're looking at a five, $6,000 repair. Just rough math off the top of my head. This here takes two hours and takes $33 in parts. So at $120 an hour, you're 240 in labor, plus you know, your $33 in parts and an oil change or whatever, you're looking at like 300 bucks out the door for this repair. This may last just as long as everything else. So you're either going to do this or you're going to fully rebuild it from scratch. There really is no in between. And when you tell a customer, hey, I get your truck back on the road sounding good for 300 bucks and it might run the rest of its life that way or it might start tapping again. Or you spend $6,000. We put all new hardware in this and that's not even including front timing cover gaskets and are you gonna reuse the cam chains with 160,000? Do the phasers need work? See where I'm going here? Once you start cracking into this beast, you, it's hard to really draw a line of where you should stop. So for me, there's no risk in doing this, right? If this doesn't work, you're out 300 bucks, you need a cam anyway. This is not a repair that I think shops should be doing and putting their name on and warrantying. This is for the home mechanic who's got a truck or a car that's tapping. You want to throw a couple hours of labor at it and 33 bucks, fix your tap. It might last the rest of the life of the vehicle, might not. But if it doesn't, what, you're out 33 bucks and a couple hours of your time and you're right back to square run, needs a cam anyway. So I think this is an extremely low risk procedure. I understand that real mechanics get really pissed about it, but it's not about that. At the end of the day, people want their vehicle working correctly. And if you can do it for the 33 bucks, go ahead. I mean, there's really, you're not, you're not gonna hurt anything. Putting a new rocker on a bad lobe, what's it gonna do? Wipe the lobe out further, wipe out the new rocker. I mean, there's literally no risk to doing this. So that's why I recommend this as a fix. We've kind of proved it with this exhaust cam. I had 148 on it when that exhaust cam developed a tap it's got 168 on it now and that lobe looks better than it did when we first put it together it may not be correct in ford's book it may not be correct with your shop policy and it may not be correct if this just isn't what you're into at the end of the day a fix is a fix if the truck doesn't tap anymore it runs great and it's not tearing up the cam lobe but i don't know what what more you could want from that Hire this girl up take a listen all right so as usual nice and quiet in here again Nothing tappy tappy in, none of that crap. But I'm gonna give this thing an oil change and send it on its way. I do want to go a little further and try to understand the failure mode a little more on these. So I think it's safe to say that these are just splash oiled, right? You've got that oiling hole there. So that one does not look good. That looks kind of grimed up. Not looking so much better. Let's see if we can cut these apart and understand what's happening here. Oh, there, get this thing to pop off. There we go. Well, there's a clue. Uh, all those bearings are not supposed to be on one side of the shaft. Would you look at that? All right, so this top side that you're looking at here is where the cam lobe rides. I can see that that is below the shaft, as in the shaft is notched. And all of the rollers have packed into the top, creating a seizure of this roller here. So let's see if we can get that apart and start measuring bearings and inspecting the shaft. Bearings fell out pretty easy. So now this roller should be free-ish. There we go. And the roller comes off. There's your problem, lady. So, 
that's a problem, but is that the problem? Is that what caused it? We don't know that yet. These roller bearings, the needles, could have made it to the high end of this, and this was just spinning on here and burning into this shaft until, um, well, until it eventually locked up. Also, looking at this, I don't really see where the oil hole is. Is that it there? Yeah, let's pop that open and see what kind of schmoo we have in there. So this is interesting. That hole there is nothing. There's nothing on the back side of this that correlates with that hole. That hole's fake. So this only gets oil from what happens to splash off the cam lobe onto the surface of the roller, and then you hope, you hope that some oil comes down around the side of this face and somehow gets into the needles. That seems like um, unlikely that that would happen and that this would be a robust design. So that seems like a flaw to me. Though, on the other hand, you could argue that just having a hole on the side here probably doesn't provide much oiling, but it sure ain't gonna hurt. But we know that this failed rocker, that hole does not extend through. Maybe it's made wrong, maybe it's supposed to. Kinda wish at this point I would've bought another rocker brand new from Ford and cut it open and see what they're doing with it. But I wanna cut this one open too because this one didn't wad up yet, it's just getting loose. And this one will be a good clue of what wears first, the needles or the shaft. See how this one's got all this play. I doubt the needles are worn out that far, but we'll see what side of the shaft is wearing. If it is, that will also be a clue. Oh man, this is gold right here. So at, on the surface, that looks great, but then watch this. See how those rollers are packing right up into the bottom of that shaft? That shaft is grooved out too. So we caught this one just in time. But I think that goes to show that it's not the needles are failing and galling up. I bet these needles are still round. That shaft is wearing out on the bottom. Also worth noting here, now that I just slid it off to the end a little, I'd lost a couple rollers, but everything feels good there. And that means that the rollers haven't lost substantial diameter. Neither has the bore of the main cam follower roller increased. So this is isolated just to shaft wear. Now let's see if we can get this thing off. It's hard to do this with one hand. There we go. Look at that. Wow. That is hefty wear right there. Just on the pressure surface of that shaft. So what this means to me is, you know, both of these actually failed the same way. It's just this one failed sooner and we allowed this shaft to wear down further until the needles stack up and seize the roller. This one, we caught it just in time. We just happened to be in there. We were able to fix it before it went catastrophic. One intentional feature that I noticed is this cup right here on the bottom. You can see that that's got that stamped feature there in that flat piece. And that would potentially allow oil to drain from those needle bearings. But this is on the bottom, so keep in mind, this is the top of the rocker here as it's in the engine. The camshaft is beating down on the top of this. Maybe, maybe this feature existed up top before the cam tore it up, and that's why I can't see it. I'd have to look at another one that's not ruined to know. But that would possibly be the only way Ford is going to get oil into those needle bearings is if oil leaks between the lobe and the roller every revolution and pumps a little bit of oil down into here, and then it could drain out the bottom of the bearings here. But whatever they're doing, it ain't working. I'm curious what you guys think about that failure mode. So I don't know of anyone else that's like cut these apart and really looked into why these fail. It's unfortunate that it keeps happening to certain engines. I want to get to the bottom and understand why they're failing. So a couple points right off the top, right? It, they're not oil pressure fed at any point. So you've got oil pressure to the camshafts and then you just have splash oiling for these rockers. You may have some oil bleeding up through the tip of the lifter, which will then potentially splash onto that roller or onto the camshaft lobe. Plus you have some oil coming out around the cam caps that are also wetting the camshaft lobes. That will then oil the surface between the roller that's on the rocker and the camshaft lobe itself. 
But with the way these are built, the pretty tight clearance uh, between where the roller fits in these stamped sheet metal parts, there is a small stamped mark in the side of these that would potentially um, allow some oil to come off the cam lobe and into those needle bearings, but it doesn't seem promising. So where, where I'm really hung up on this is is this an oiling issue or is it a shaft hardness issue, right? Those rollers are perfectly round and they're still smooth. They're not galled up, at least on the one we took apart that didn't reach catastrophic failure. If they're still rolling and the inner race of the roller still looks good, it kind of makes me think that none of the rollers were skidding to actually abrade that material on the shaft. The rollers were still rolling. So it makes me think there might be a hardness issue of that shaft. Maybe Ford had a couple bad batches of shafts or they didn't get hardened correctly. That's what's happening. Why is it happening? Maybe you guys can tell me, or maybe there's some Ford fans out there that have already been down this path and have determined the true root cause of this. But right now, all I can recommend is Keep a good eye on your rockers. Keep a good ear on your engine. As soon as you hear one starting to clutter a little bit or a little tappy tap here and there, it's probably worth pulling that valve cover off. Go feel all of them. And then if you can't find any loose, turn the engine 180 and go feel them all again. You will probably find one in the stages of failing like I found here. And if you catch it at that point, the camshaft's in perfect condition and you just swap that thing out and you're good as new. If you let it go further to where the roller locks up and starts to wear on the camshaft, well, then you're in a little bit more of a risky situation like we were on that silver truck. I don't think it's a maintenance issue. I don't think it's a lack of oiling. I think it's a straight up bad design. And I am really curious now uh, what the new design that Ford put in these rockers. Because like I said, I think in the first video, the new ones that I pulled out of the bag were a slightly different design than the ones I'm taking out of this 2018. Well guys, I'm gonna wrap this one up here. I hope you found some value into the investigation of these Ford Coyote rockers. Um, there were two reasons I wanted to make this video. One, I wanted to get back under that valve cover and see how the repair we did 20,000 miles ago was looking. And fortunately, it's looking great. So that is encouraging that these camshafts will put up with a lot more than we may give them credit for. But two, I did not expect to find two more bad rockers. I only expected to find one. And now my curiosity has peaked after cutting these apart to really determine what the heck is going on here. What is causing this? I'm also curious to hear if you guys have had this happen to yours. Is it in a Mustang or is it in an F-150? And how hard do you drive it? This truck gets really babied. And I'm wondering if that is a contributing factor of it because I have friends, Eric, I'm looking at you, that drift these things. They beat the balls off them all day at 7,000 RPMs and they never damage a rocker arm. Yet the truck that sees 2,500 RPMs on a hard day is throwing rocker arms apart. So that could be something about it. Could be a bad batch. Could be bad luck. Who knows? Anyway, as always, look forward to hearing from you guys down in the comments what you think about this one. Thanks for watching Spank Ranch Garage. I'll see you next time.